Come, let us worship God and bow low before the God who made us, for he is the Lord our God. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the grace and peace of God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. You're very welcome to Mass today on the fifth Sunday of Ordinary Time. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, you came to gather the nations into the peace of God's kingdom. Lord, have mercy. You come in word and in sacrament to strengthen us and make us holy. Christ have mercy. You will come again in glory with salvation for your people. Lord have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Glory to God in the highest and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father. Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father. You take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Keep your family safe, O Lord, with unfailing care, that, relying solely on the hope of heavenly grace, they may be defended always by your protection. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. A reading from the book of Job. Is not man's life on earth nothing more than pressed service, his time no better than hired drudgery? Like the slave sighing for the shade, or the workman with no thought but his wages, months of delusion I have assigned to me, nothing for my own but nights of grief. Lying in bed, I wonder, when will it be day? Risen, I think, how slowly evening comes. Restlessly I fret till twilight falls. Swifter than an, a weaver's shuttle my days have passed and vanished, leaving no hope behind. Remember that my life is but a breath and that my eyes will never see joy. The word of the Lord. Praise the Lord who heals the brokenhearted. Praise the Lord for he is good. Sing to our God for he is loving. To him our praise is due. The Lord builds up Jerusalem and brings back Israel's exiles. He heals the brokenhearted and binds up all their wounds. He fixes the number of the stars. He calls each one by its name. Praise the Lord who heals the brokenhearted. Our Lord is great and almighty. His wisdom can never be measured. The Lord praises the lowly, raises the lowly. He humbles the wicked to the dust. 
Praise the Lord, for he heals the broken hearted. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. I do not boast of preaching the gospel, since it is a duty which has been laid on me. I should be punished if I did not preach it. If I had chosen this work myself, I might have been paid for it, but as I have not, it is a responsibility which has been put into my hands. Do you know what my reward is? It is this, in my preaching, to be able to offer the good news free and not insist on the rights which the gospel gives me. So, though I am not a slave of any man, I have made myself the slave of everyone, so as to win as many as I could. For the weak I have made myself weak. I have made myself all things to all men in order to save some at any cost. And I still do this for the sake of the gospel, to have a share in its blessing. The Word of the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. I am the light of the world, says the Lord. Anyone who follows me will have the light of life. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. On leaving the synagogue, Jesus went with James and John straight to the house of Simon and Andrew. Now, Simon's mother-in-law had gone to bed with fever, and they told him about her straight away. He went to her, took her by the hand, and helped her up, and the fever left her, and she began to wait on them. That evening, after sunset, they brought to him all who were sick and those who were possessed by devils. The whole town came crowding round the door, and he cured many who were suffering from diseases of one kind or another. He also cast out many devils, but he would not allow them to speak, because they knew who he was. In the morning, long before dawn, he got up and left the house, and he went off to a lonely place and prayed there. Simon and his companions set out in search of him, and when they found him, they said, Everybody is looking for you, he answered. Let us go elsewhere to the neighboring country towns so that I can preach there too, because that is why I came. And he went all through Galilee, preaching in their synagogues and casting out devils. The Gospel of the Lord. On one of San Francisco's streets, there's a funeral parlor with some beige curtains covering the window. In front of the curtains, there is a sign which reads, Why walk round half dead when we can lay you to rest for a hundred bucks? Well, we may be walking round half dead and not be fully aware of it. In the Gospel today, we see Jesus wasting no time in getting down to some serious healing. The reference to casting out devils would seem to suggest to me that the majority of his teaching was in the spiritual domain. But physical healing is also important because our invisible spiritual side is expressed through the visible, that is, our bodies. In that sense, body and soul are one. And as the Roman poet Juvenal wrote, men sana incorpore sana, a healthy mind in a healthy body. Here, however, it's not about having a healthy body for its own sake, which others can envy, but how we can best use it for the good of our fellow man and woman. It is interesting to note that from today's Gospel, that as soon as Peter's mother-in-law was cured of fever, she was up like a shot 
waiting on Jesus and like the inimitable Mrs. Doyle insisting he and his friends have the proverbial cuppa not forgetting the sandwiches. This was her way of showing gratitude and getting on with the job. So pro prefer however not to get on with the job because in making a meal out of their illness they wallow in all the attention they otherwise wouldn't get. I suppose there is a bit of a hypochondriac in all of us. However, all healing of the body as we know is temporary because we are mortal beings and have ultimately to face up to the demise of our bodies and the end of our earthly existence. But what we did in the body will be central as to how we spend our eternity. Scriptures tell us that all the truth about us will be brought out in the law court of Christ and each of us will get what he deserves for the things he did or she did in the body, good or bad. So, what we see with our eyes, what we hear with our ears, what we do with our hands, the words from our mouths, the places our feet take us will all determine where our lives are taking us. These senses and faculties we can use for good or ill. If they are used to put love into action, then we are fulfilling the very purpose of our existence. In today's Gospel we heard that Jesus drove out the demons. Now a demon could be described as any influence which limits our freedom to love and be loved. Lent is round the corner and it's a time when we try and curb the excessive desires of the body which impede us from placing those same bodies at the service of love. That's what Lent is all about. Through prayer and fasting, which are bodily spiritual exercises in themselves, we can remove the debris which blurs our vision of where our lives are taking us in this world. At the end of the Gospel today, the Apostle said to Jesus, Everybody is looking for you. Well, we don't have to go very far today to find him. He is right here with us in this Mass. We are part even of the body of Christ. Let us entrust ourselves more fully to him. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, through God from through God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. 
He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. By the mystery of this water and wine, may we come to share in the divinity of Christ who humbled himself to share in our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of my hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. O Lord our God, who once established these created things to sustain us in our frailty, grant, we pray, that they may become for us now the sacrament of eternal life. Through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For you so love the world that in your mercy you sent us the Redeemer to live like us in all things but sin, so that you might love in us what you loved in your Son, by whose obedience we have been restored to those gifts of yours that by sinning we had lost in disobedience. And so, Lord, with all the angels and saints, we too give you thanks as in exaltation we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts we pray by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it, and he gave it to the disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you.
In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to the disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, Saviour of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held me to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that, partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world. Bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope and Ralph our Bishop and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours forever and ever. Jesus taught us to call God our Father, and so we say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, 
but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be consoled. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall have their fill. Let us pray. O oh God, who have willed that we be partakers in the one bread and one chalice, grant we pray so to live that made one in Christ we may joyfully bear fruit for the salvation of the world through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go now in the peace of Christ. <laughs>